It is so big and it expanded the size the geography is expanding now on the main axis that runs from the west. That is the sixth first temple. But the very last structure you this was the work of the Nineteenth Dynasty. Dramatis was the second and his father seat the great. And they built the docking platform outside and linked him with the Sphinx Abbey. Other pharaohs came to power and found that this is an nice island. So, food, you have to understand, everybody before the gods wants to wear, wants to look their best, they want to be uh, the the museum at night. And that's exactly what the pharaohs did in the museum. But see, we don't go to Luxor and everywhere we spin on, we have a ton of money. Yeah, so we can go to the museum. Absolutely. Right? Not on Earth. Home and the guidebooks and people uh, and even vendors in the street the word cartouche and of course everybody is wondering what does cartouche mean cartouche it's a french word it means shotgun cartridge you know the shotgun cartridge click boom okay why is that because when jean-francois champollion the great french linguist expert who broke into the code he broke into our, our code of the ancient language by watching the rosetta stone which was one decree written in hieroglyphs Demotic and then Greek. So when he came to these forms, he did not know what these are. So when he gave up, he says, and being a Frenchman, it's a shungat cartridge in French, cartouche. But what is that in reality? This is actually originally was the circle sign. And because in ancient Egypt, we believe that eternity is remaining in the circle. So of course, the name of the Pharaoh who should be granted the eternal powers on his day of coronation, the name itself would be given the eternal power. But to write in a circle is a bit inconvenient. So we elongated the circle. So what is it again, the circle made of? That's a rope that goes up, comes down, gets knotted, and that's the other end of the rope. But that was the royal seal. Only the pharaoh will have his name in. Well, expect, of course, at the time of the pharaohs, there were lots of common kids having the name of the pharaoh, and lots of common people having the name of the pharaoh. The differentiation was based on who's the one in the cartoon. And the pharaoh on his day of coronation, he receives four more names. By that he receives the five royal names of Egypt. How can we read that? For instance, this one reads Usir Ma'at Ra, which means the strong justice of Gadra, Setep En Ra, selected by Ra. So the name is very descriptive, like the Native American name. So he is the strong justice of Gadra. He's the selected one by Gadra. Then his other name, Ra Mes Musu, which means Gadra, the solar disk that shines from the water. Ra Mes Nisu, like Mo S-S. Ra Mes Nisu, Miri Emen. So it is Gadra that shines from the water. It is the beloved one by God Emen. Down here we have one of the most sacred and most powerful signs of ancient Egypt, the Ankh. The Ankh has half million meanings. It combines between the male and female symbols. It represents the blood shed by Osiris. It represents the fertility. It represents life. And we can keep on going on for a long time. At the end, what did we do with this? In our ancient times, everybody wore it as the symbol of life. But when we adapted to Christianity for the Church of St. Mark, and we were still occupied by the Romans to escape the persecution, we kept on wearing it as if it, it's our ankh, but we meant with it the Christian cross. Because you all know that the crucifix happened on a capital letter T. So this top in the Orthodox churches came from the ancient Egyptian ankh or symbol of life. Okay? Very good. Now, we are all standing in what's known as the great or the ground hypostyle hole of Khan. Here, of course, the area looks normal, but actually it is far bigger than normal. For instance, the number of columns alone 
the center islands formed out of, went up and all of them had a roof so there was a giant ceiling here one day the difference in height between the center height and both sides that's specifically for the windows if you look up between the height you slabs about three feet thick of freestanding sandstone the whole area when it was found in our modern days by the French Egyptian team was mostly flat on the ground due to ancient earthquakes. It took us, the modern people, with all the equipment 30 years to put it back together. In its original creation, it took a long time, long plumes on top of his head. Now, look clearly at him. What does he have more than any other god you've seen? Look closer. <laughs> Think nest here. We are. <laughs> Doesn't take much here. Okay, have you seen it? Oh, yeah. A very proud direction. Now, this is a form from many forms God Amun could come on. In the ancient mythology, one of the great deeds in their life. So the story says that God Men, he, who is the god of sexual fertility, was one day the chief commander of the army of Egypt. And Egypt was announced at that time in danger. So he gathered the army and gave them a very strong speech and let's go out marching to protect the motherland. So all the other generals looked at him and said, Men, you're a very old man. Why? You stay in Egypt with the women and the children and all the men are going to go out. Okay, go, got speed. That's why, yet, we punished him by chipping off one arm and one leg. And kept him with his very proud, a very good question. How did he get everything up? Remember, the mud brick there was a ramp. Here was a ramp, because mud bricks are to be recycled. So every time we finish the ramp here, we use the mud brick to build the ramp outside. Because you break the mud, by the way, has always been the Egyptian sandbag. I don't know why, but it's historically. Every time we have nothing to do, the Pharaoh goes beat the hell out of them and come back. It's like, what the hell have you done to you? It's like they are the Libo tribes. Okay, beat them up again. So it has been a, like a habit going on and on, and it doesn't want to stop. So it seems that Gaddafi is not the first DNA spam. That's the whole DNA is totally messed up. So all these beautiful things to be carved here is to prove the great power of the Pharaoh who actually got this power because of the support of the God into his weapon. And all the great value loot and all the treasures that they will gain from these battles by that the deeper you go, the deeper you go back in time. So if we come to a certain layer, everybody is asking for simple things like food for the kids or water for the crop. So we know that these were hard days. If we come to a times when everybody is asking for the extra, for the abundance, then we know that these are times of... We have a solar disk right and here. Doesn't this look like the stinger of the bee? And that's a bee. This was a bee. A bee. Okay. This here, before it, there was another letter, which is the Nisut, or the Savannah reed. When we have the Savannah reed and the bee, it's <coughs> So how to erect it? First of all, you have to understand that the obelisks don't come single. They have to be in pairs. And the importance of it or the divine part of it is the top of it, because the top of it is the Ben Ben or the Pyramidian or the Primaval Mound that rose from the Primaval Ocean, allowing the Phoenix to land and lay the four eggs back again to creation. So when we give it as a gift to the God, we give it to them because of, as if it were saying that you God are amongst the gods that initiate life. And normally, the top of it, the cap, will be covered in gold or silver or electrum. And electrum is an alloy combining gold and silver together. So let's assume that they were cut and they were shipped and they are here, now, sitting on the ground. Each one of those babies, 330 tons. How can we raise them up in times of no wires or cables?